Joe Swift. Welcome to the RHS Chelsea Flower Show 2021, an event supported by M&G and a very special hour-long look back at this year's event. And what a fantastic week it's been. The first time ever in the show's 108-year history that it has been held here in September. We have had glorious weather, a plethora of spectacular gardens and exhibits to feast our eyes on. And hasn't it been funny to be in amongst huge crowds of people again after all this time. It's been rather great. wonderful too. It feels normal, doesn't it, again? I've been coming to Chelsea for over sort of 35, over 35 years. And September, there's something really refreshing about it, plant-wise as well. Very interesting. Well, it's been lovely to see different plants, different palettes, different colours at this yeah. time of year. Everyone's pulled out all the stops to really make this show happen, haven't they? It's wonderful. Well, tonight we're going to share some of our highlights with you, starting with just a few of the standout moments from the last seven days here at Chelsea. It is so good to be back. It feels wonderful. I am so thrilled to give you your gold medal. This is the Wimbledon of gardening. It's the Paris catwalk of horticultural fashion. I think the displays are, are stunning. I've never seen anything quite like it. What this is, is a convergence, the, the best of what we do in Britain in relation to gardens. I'm absolutely thrilled to give you your gold medal. <laughs> your gold medal. Oh. Oh. Finally, we can see something all together that's beautiful and celebrate nature the way it should be celebrated. And it's really beautiful as well to see a very different series of gardens. Every time I come here, I find something else out about plants that I didn't know before. Wow. Chelsea is vibrant, full of colour and totally inspiring. In my world, this is more like the, the Champions League, shall we say, of, of, of gardening. Princess Anne has just arrived, Prince Edward, Sophie Wessex. Oh, it's fantastic to meet her. And she was really interested in the idea of taking back an urban space and greening it up. So it's funny, when the, when the royals come here, it sort of gives you this, you get this energy. Stuff I couldn't possibly do in my garden, but you know, I dream on, really. This is an extra special year, I think. I mean, I didn't expect massive, great hulks of rock and Yorkshire dry stone walls. To come here to see it in all its glory at whatever time of the year is just amazing. The nation's sort of aching for events like this, just to get out and be in the open air and really appreciate nature. It's so nice to be here, IRL. Stands for In Real Life Kids. Most visitors make a beeline for large show gardens on Main Avenue the minute they arrive. And after all the excitement and anticipation for their first Chelsea in 28 months, remember, they weren't disappointed. Well, here is what lay in store for them on their first three show gardens. This is 60 Degrees East, a garden between continents by designers Ekaterina Zazukina and Carly Kershaw. It represents the landscape of the Ural Mountains in Russia, the divide between the continents of Europe and Asia. And where continents collide, mountains rise. And some of the stonework in this garden is, is monolithic. Pieces in that waterfall are three and a half metres long and five tonnes in weight. At its heart is an environmental message, 
with sculptures that reflect how industry is threatening the habitat of the area, but also give a nod to the mountain people's rich love of folklore. The planting was inspired by a garden in the Russian city of Yekaterinburg, where plants from east and west rub shoulders. So you've got Scots pine with weeping willow, Japanese anemone with common or garden geum. What they have in common though, is that they can all survive the bitter Russian winters. Jonathan, fantastic to see you back at Chelsea. Glorious garden as ever. Do you feel you've achieved your goal of sort of establishing that essence of the Himalayan foothills? It's gone really well, I've enjoyed it. Um, throughout the last three weeks, I've tried to select the best bits of what the, of, the, of the Himalayas that I've seen, distill them down to their best qualities, and then very slightly amplify um, wherever needed, just to sort of enhance the effect of it. And, I feel that we've more or less achieved that. I mean, what's interesting, looking across the garden, these are all species, of course, that come from the Himalaya. That's right. Yes. But they're also plants that a lot of people will see growing in their home gardens. The three gardens I've done at Chelsea have always been about showing plants that people know quite well growing in their natural habitat. Uh, and the Himalayas is no exception. So people hopefully will recognize uh, Pesicarias uh, and um, Hypericum and Rhododendrons but put all together, um, just showing where they like to grow in the wild. I guess for all the exoticism, the look of a lot of these plants, even this ginger in front of me looks wildly tropical. Yeah. Yet they can grow quite happily in our climes. Yes, yes. Uh, when I was out there, we were out there actually two years ago researching um, back in the days when you could go out and, and research. Um, this is exactly the combination. You know, the, the, the plants that we know quite well, like Persicaria, is growing alongside all the tropical because the the altitude goes from two to 4,000 metres, that's the area that this garden's set in, and at 2,000 metres it's, it's warm and it's wet. Uh, 4,000 metres it's more like it is today, uh, a bit cooler, but they do grow naturally together. And, that, and that's the combination I wanted to achieve for this garden. Fantastic. Well, it, it looks truly superb. I think Thank you've done you. a fantastic job, as ever. Thanks, Nick. Such a variety of styles and designs there. Hugo and Charlotte's garden. I love some of the details in that garden, the, the bird's nest the hedgehog hole, all about bringing the urban and the, the natural environment together. Yeah, it's a pocket park, isn't it? And it's the most beautiful pocket park I've <laughs> ever seen. The planting is exquisite. It's my favourite planting in the whole show. The repetition of some of the perennials and grasses and celebrating autumn and the colours that we get in autumn, it's absolutely stunning, I um, think. We are very lucky because we do get to go on these gardens, unlike mm. most people. And there are wonderful corners. I love the, the literally the far corner of that garden. It's yeah. so lovely and peaceful and tranquil. There's a bit of bling, though, with those, those the golden yeah. waterfalls. You it's know, good, it's yeah, like, I like that. We are at Chelsea. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think it's really cool. And then talking about going on gardens. Now, I have never been to the Himalayas. Actually, I would love to go to the Himalayas. You don't have to go to the Himalayas. I don't know. You just go to Jonathan Snow's Thank garden. Thank you, Jonathan Snow. Because you really do feel transported, and it's yeah. very clever to have done that in just three weeks. It feels like it has been there for centuries. Yeah, well, you can sit on that elevated you know, platform with that structure above you, which is absolutely stunning, looking up into the roof. Yeah are looking over the planting and it's the volume of planting and the trees and you, you know and the water the rills because you walk through in the pathways and the rills and the little you know the water's coming down and yeah. just such a beautiful atmosphere he's created it is there. he created a strong atmosphere and, and all the gardens are so different this year there's no doubt about it i mean then we're here you know which is um a really interesting garden as well. I actually really like this garden because I watched it being built and those rocks going in, that, I do love the waterfall. The waterfall's brilliant. But, um, do you know, they, not, they have named, all these rocks have been named. So there's Steve Rock, I think, up there. Yeah. They've all been named after people who built the garden. I have a, I have a rock. Oh, yeah. Which one's my that? one's down there. Oh, you got one down there? I've got one down there. So what about, there. where's Joe the Rock? No, you weren't here. Would you mean you weren't here? here? You could have named one when I wasn't here. The huge team that built this this uh, garden. Yeah. Everybody got their own. I love the cl the clip pines <laughs> as well. You got small clip pines and large clip pines and some wonderful use of the trees yeah. and the, the plants and the way they've used the rock bank. It's really nice. So you're looking onto it if you're a yeah. visitor here. Works beautifully, I think. Right onto the next two show gardens, which couldn't have been more different.
Florence Nightingale Garden by designer Robert Myers represents a courtyard garden for a hospital. Marking 200 years since the birth of Florence Nightingale, it shines a spotlight on the crucial role nurses play and gardens can play in modern healthcare. The paths, they're generous to provide views from an imagined hospital ward and also easy access for patients in recovery. The planting is made up of calming muted tones and plants used in medicine like taxis, foxgloves and echinacea. And like a curtain screen around a hospital bed, the garden is wrapped with a plywood wall inscribed with pictures of the great lady herself and Florence Nightingale's words. And a pergola redolent of a giant model skeleton provides shade from the midday sun. This garden is absolutely magical. When you stand on it, it has an incredible feeling. It's serene, it's calm, it's green, and actually it leads you through. And everywhere you go, you see a little glimpse of view that has been placed perfectly just to catch your eye. There's water there and there's this stream running through. Now these structures, you know, they are huge, these big bamboo structures, but because they're sort of light and see-through, they don't feel as if they dominate the site too much. Love the green planting, the odd white and blue flowers. I love this car. It's just so atmospheric in here. Peter, Chin, congratulations. This is such a gorgeous garden, I have to say. Are you pleased with it? Yes, we are very happy with it, and it's been a privilege to be here. Yeah, first time at Chelsea, it's not yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, the water, the way you've used water in different ways, Peter, you know, it sort of meanders through and trickles through and leads you around. It's so clever. How easy is this to achieve? Oh, it's a very, it's a big challenge to achieve it. We've got 20,000 litres of water in this garden, but we knew that actually it would be a key point to add the atmosphere to it. The waterfall, the cascade, the rills that wrap around the central feature, and the main body of water, the Blue Lagoon, cleaning in the water is just fantastic, and it catches the light beautifully. Yeah, I mean, the details and the little cascades are just wonderful. The structures, they look fabulous. You know, they, they're set with this backdrop, in the whole setting of Chelsea, but I just love the sort of the, the texture and the shape of them. They're not too heavy, are they? No, they are. The, they're actually made from bamboo, and then um, the, they are just like a, we are just thinking use the bamboo as a, 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 they are quite a sustainable material um, the, the, to use. Yeah, and then we try to give this vertical element to like a represent the Guangzhou city, like the kind of intensity together with the tree together. Yeah, yeah, it just it's come together so beautifully and yeah. the, the green palette of plants, it's just so serene in here. The Guangzhou China Garden not only secured a first gold medal for designers Peter and Chin, they were also awarded the biggest prize of them all here at Chelsea, the RHS Best Show Garden 2021. So many congratulations to them both. Quite a remarkable achievement, considering this was their first ever Chelsea. Quite incredible. What well, equally important, though, is the winner of the BBC RHS People's Choice Award, which is chosen by you. And we were there to surprise the lucky winner. The designer, he does a lot of... He's very inspired by organic forms, by... RHS Director of Shows Helena Pettit presented Tom Massey with the award for his Yo Valley Organic Garden. Tom, <laughs> congratulations. On behalf of the BBC and the RHS, you are the People's Choice Award winner for Chelsea Flower Show 2021. <laughs> Tom, well, after designer Tom Massey had a chance to let it all sink in, Monty caught up with him to reflect on how he had captured the heart of the nation. It's always fascinating to me which garden wins the people's choice because we're here all week and we see the gardens, we form our informed opinions by going on them, but viewers obviously get a different look and I'm going to have to negotiate these steps quite carefully. And what I think people love about this garden, and I love it too, is that over the last year or so we've all had time to really appreciate how important the natural elements of our garden is. And to see a garden that's organic, that is so carefully planted with 
native plants that really conjures up the essence of all that is good about the countryside and gardens and sustainable that we can all share. And I think that's tapped in and therefore has rightfully been honoured with this award. Now, Tom, you must still be slightly reeling. I, I am, yeah, really uh, amazing result, but yeah, quite It's uh, been surprised. a good week, gold medal. Gold medal. People's award. People's choice, yeah. People's choice. Uh, what do you think that people found in your garden? Um, I think it's partly the message, the organic message, the first organic show garden at Chelsea, the support of the Soil Association, the uh, planting for biodiversity, all the kind of stories and ideas woven through it. I think there's a real, I mean, I'm seeing it in my private work, there's a real shift towards more sustainable practice, sustainable yeah. gardening, yeah. being kinder to the environment, not killing off all the insects, you know, reducing the use of chemicals in gardening. So I think it's uh, partly that. Um, I think maybe also partly embracing of autumn, you know, the fact that this is yeah. the one and only September show and this garden really celebrates that. You know, you've got things going over, you've got the autumn colours, you've got the the kind of birch trees dropping their leaves. I mean, what you're saying is, is what I suspect, that, that it's a sort of exemplar, a perfect example of what's going on in their lives. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly, you know, I suppose. It's picked up in people's back gardens and said, OK, here's some magic dust and this is what it could be like. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, yeah, you know, that's... Uh, if people are inspired, I, I, you know, this, this is my favourite time of year, I think, yeah. in the garden. And for, you know, for farmers, for harvest, for that kind of, that bounty, that time where summer's over and it's, you, everything's a bit more relaxed, a bit more kind of um, chilled out. And it's that, that time of year where the seasons are changing, there's a little chill in the air, you get that really amazing low light. Yeah. And I think this garden shows that off well, really well. Congratulations, because it's one thing to win prizes, but actually to be loved as well, as people obviously do with this garden, that's something special. Yeah, so well, well done. It's a testament to organic, and I think it's a great message. OK. There was an RHS People's Choice Award in the small garden category too, and there was a real mix of styles and atmospheres created by the designers of the artisan and sanctuary gardens. From the impressive recreation of a 15th century blacksmith forge in the Blue Diamond Forge Garden, to the therapeutic cocoon of the NHS Tribute Garden. The Nordic seaside landscape of the Finnish Soul Garden. And the serene slice of Dartmoor depicted in the Psalm 23 Garden. But it was the parsley box garden by designer Alan Williams that triumphed and was voted for by the public as their favourite small garden. Now, his modern take on a traditional kitchen garden really resonated with the visitors to the show who all voted for it. A September Chelsea has meant a new palette of plants on show in the Great Pavilion, the epicentre of horticulture. On Medals Day, our very own floral queen, Carol, was there to celebrate with the winners. Even though Chelsea has moved from summer to autumn, there's no shortage of wonderful results here in the Great Pavilion. Impressively, Rualan Fuchsias have been at Chelsea for over 30 years. Congratulations, Colin. How many gold medals is that? No, that is <laughs> No <two>. idea, no. <laughs> Not at all. And do you think there's anything really special that drew the judges' attention? Yeah, I think we've got a few on there that you know we wouldn't have normally in the May show, so it's, a, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Well done. I hope you have a brilliant day. Thanks, Carol. I'm sure we will. Dibley's specialise in streptocarpus and begonias. Congratulations, Lynn. Another gold medal. How many is that? 31. And how many times have you been coming? 32. <laughs> Were there any particular challenges this year? Well, we only actually really confirmed four weeks ago that we were coming what? to the show. Really? Yeah, so it was a little bit of a mad dash. Well, you certainly did it. You did it proud. Thank you. <laughs> Kath and Neil, a deserved gold medal for this beautiful stun. It really is breathtaking. Well, I've seen you at lots of shows, but I've never seen you at Chelsea. It's our first and our last. We're what? going to retire. 
so. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't. We can, we will. Well, we're retiring from shows. Yeah. I will still keep my hand in, propagating, and I'm sure that you will see this type of display carried on. Well, congratulations. And here's to many more successful years for Larchfield Tree. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Callum. you very much. Angela, I think it's a superb display and you've won a gold medal. Yes, yes, it's fantastic. We're really, really pleased. And it's been quite a long time coming, hasn't it? Yeah, we've been coming for many, many years and uh, we've had silver gilt, but this is our very first gold at Chelsea. And the plants here are just so gorgeous. I mean, this Nandina is lovely, isn't it? Yes, so this section here, this yellow section, sweeps right up the centre of the exhibit and right through to this pyrocanthus tree, which yes. is gold. Yeah. Full of golden berries. Absolutely. Very, <laughs> very, very well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Of all the splendid displays under this roof, there's only one that can win the most coveted award. That, the best exhibit in the Great Pavilion. And it's this one, South West in Blue. Now, one of the most exciting things about Chelsea is that the garden designers showcase so many new ideas and trends here. They inspire us to push the boundaries in our own gardens. Now, one person always with her finger on the pulse is Rachel Detaine. And here she is with her top planting styles for 2021. One of the absolute best things about having a show at this time of year is having the opportunity to see lots of different types of planting styles, things that you wouldn't see in a late May show. And here we've got something that I think we're seeing a lot of and it's really beautiful. It's that sort of very loose and naturalistic style of planting that works brilliantly at this time of year. You've got wonderful, mixture of planting here, lots of late flowering perennials. Daisy shapes are really prominent, so there are asters and rubecchias, and then plenty of echinacea going through. I love this one, this is Magnus, but those wonderful soft dusky pink petals. And that colour's borne out as well in some of the grasses. Here we've got panic and score, and they add movement from the slightest breeze. They just sort of effervesce, they sparkle above the rest of the plants. If you're looking for that kind of prairie style planting, that lovely loose quality, this is exactly how to do it. Now this planting scheme is a masterclass in the hot colours that you get in the end of summer and on into autumn. And it's really done almost as a river of these colours all the way through with the sanguisorba there, that dark plummy red, really beautiful and taking us into the digitalis. And that still has that little bit of pink. And behind it, a beautiful Rebecca. And then that yellow follows through with the Hellenium and into the Crocosmia. This is George Davison. Not as well known probably as that one. That's Emily McKenzie, larger orange flowers. Underneath the crowning glory of this crab apple called Winter Gold. Absolutely beautiful planting, full of heat. Pizzazz. Another planting style featuring really strongly at the show is woodland planting, using shade-loving plants. And who would have thought you can get pretty much an entire forest into a container like this? It's topped off with this wonderful betula pendula. And then beneath the branches, you've got all sorts of perennials ferns and grasses, the Carex here with this lovely orangey tint on it. This is a Dryopteris, it's the autumn fern, and it's lovely because the fronds, when they unfurl, have this orange tint to them, and then as they mature, they become more green. I think the star of the show here really is the Viburnum opulus, with those glassy berries just shining, those wonderful oranges and reds, absolutely beautiful. And I think it shows that whether you've got sun or shade, really important when you're planning your planting schemes to think beyond summer and make it work in every season. 
Well, it's no surprise that the last 18 months has sparked a new passion for gardening in so many of us. And one man who has found a real connection with plants during lockdown is Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter Craig David. I had the pleasure of meeting him earlier in the week. How lovely to see you here. So lovely to see you too. And this is your first time at Chelsea, isn't it? Yeah, first time, long time coming though. I and what do you like, make of it? I mean, it's beautiful and the day's stunning as well. It's kind of taking it in. It's like I really want to like reduce it to a means to an end where you're rushing around and you're not really present. So it's been, it's been great when you meet some of the designers and people who've taken time to really showcase what they've been about for, especially through lockdown. And I think everyone's getting their release right now. So it's just lovely to be here and be part of it. And that is what has happened to you, really, isn't it? Mm. During lockdown, you have found a new passion for, for plants, for gardening. Totally. I mean, it, it was having time. I think before I was traveling and I was touring, and when you're at home, you start to look at other things that interest you. And I'd always been interested in plants and landscaping and nature. For me, it was, I think, for so many people suffering with mental health illnesses and just depression in, in general, nature has always been a release and able to go out to be able to go to the park was amazing for everyone but if you get the chance to work with plants and start to understand the relationship between them it's so powerful I mean like overwatering a, a plant or underwatering a plant um, realizing some need more attention some don't and it's the same for relationships it's like some relationships need more watering some you overwater and it's like it can really damage the relationship so the metaphor is amazing when you see nature presents itself and I learned so much and it calmed me down, got me grounded. And now I'm, I'm a huge fan of, 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 of all the people who actually work so hard and diligently and skilled at landscaping and plants. It's, it's such an art form, it's incredible. It, really and it is. involves huge patience, which I love. In this day and age, it's, you have to be patient when you're gardening. It's not a sort of here and now, is it? Totally. Talk about your garden though, and what you've mm. achieved, how it grew through lockdown. Do you know what it was, I mean, once I kind of got the, the basic kind of landscaping design, it was kind of then understanding our outdoor plants and what ones aren't going to work outside. I mean, I love tropical palm trees. I love orchids. I love ferns. And knowing that certain ones aren't going to really work in an outdoor space. And they, they may for a summer period, but if you leave them for winter, it's going to kill them. So it kind of, it went from an outdoor space and migrated indoors where I have beautiful orchids and tropical plants and, and ferns and <laughs> spider plants and you walk in and you're like okay I've walked into an extension of your garden it's I took it on board so much like that but it's great because I've got beautiful bonsais that, that need real attention like you really need to look at them and, and get deeper I think that's the best takeaway from all this your attention because it's not about how beautiful it is on the outside but when you get underneath and you look you can really see that there's either damage or something that's starting to happen that if you don't attend to it soon it will kill the whole plant that's really helped me, again, metaphor for life. Be more tentative to what's going on, not just the, the glossy flowers that look good for a moment, so. And finally, I mean, the crowds here, for a lot of people coming mm. to Chelsea, and it's wonderful that it's been able to take place so late in the year. Okay. Um, but for the, a lot of people, it's the first time they've been with so many people. You, though, you've been doing so many gigs, haven't you, with thousands and thousands of people? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's great to have that, that release now and to, to perform. It gave me a lot of time to be creative musically. Um, I've got a tour next year, an arena tour, which I'm really excited about. But at the same time, to learn about plants and get a relationship with my neighbours. I've got Charles and Carolyn across the road and Hilda, the lady who's always coming over, bringing me flowers and giving me tips on cutting. Gina, who's my house manager, who's like helped me incredibly to create my garden and my home. I'm just very thankful for the relationships that I've been able to nurture through plants and through nature. And also to let people know coming here today that to, to bridge the gap, that you don't have to have all the technical skills. You can enjoy the flowers. This is not like you have to know every single thing about a plant to enjoy it. Yep. We're all here because we love nature. And yep. I want everyone to know that you don't have to be a scientist um, in flowers and in the landscaping to appreciate beautiful flowers. So. Oh, well, lovely to hear your, your newfound passion and lovely love to it. meet you. So lovely to meet you too. <laughs> Now, for many of the nurseries here, an autumn Chelsea has created new opportunities as they've been able to display a different range of plants that beautifully reflect the season. And one man who's completely in his element at this time of year is Rob Evans from Bridgend in South Wales.
I've had the nursery since 2003, but this is a new patch of land that we're on now that we've started this year. For us, shows in May, we're normally growing in the greenhouse. Growing outside is completely different. We're open to nature. This year, we can have lots of different varieties, ones that we've never shown at Chelsea before. My name's Rob Evans, and I'll be exhibiting a Chelsea flower show for the 13th time. For Chelsea this year, I'm feeling so excited because we're showing dahlias and gladiolis. Hopefully we can wow the judges by having vast color with the gladiolis, but also the sheer amount of dahlia blooms that we'll have. To get dahlias early on in the season for Chelsea in May, we need three or four times the amount of space in our polytunnels. This time of year, we've got natural growing conditions, so that's why we're doing dahlias. Now, for the dahlias at Chelsea Show, we disbud, and we disbud to get one nice, long, straight stem. You can see on this one, the two side buds that are on the top of the stem, we're gonna take those out between our fingers and we just squeeze and pinch them out. That now will give us a nice, long stem that we can cut and have a nice, single bloom at the top, like this one is. Our dahlia collection has been growing over the years and at the moment I think we're up to about 450 to 500 varieties. We'll have a, a lot of choice because September is a natural season for dahlias. Every time I look at it I think I'm going to keep cutting it down. But then somebody else brings a new one out and you think right I better get that and try it. This one is called Max Megan and as you can see the blooms Absolutely beautiful on this variety. A medium semi-cactus and a beautiful coral pink with a lovely cream throat. But as you can see, the size of the plant and the amount of blooms on there, this is exactly what I want for Chelsea Show. Gladioli are my favorite flower because they're very stately they stand out and they're very, very bright and vibrant flowers. With Chelsea Show now in September, we're gonna have a wider range of gladiolis coming into the flower, so that it means we'll have plenty of choice. These are the gladiolis that we'll have at Chelsea Show this year. Normally, we like to cut about 100, and when we've got plenty, we'll put them all in buckets and we cut them right at floor level so that they are the full length of the spike. And these are the spikes now that we'll put into the cold store. When we get about 40 to 50 spikes, they're all ready then at the same stage. Hopefully on the stand, we'll have between 30 and 40 different varieties of gladiolis ready for Chelsea Show. Before the shows, I'm always trying to arrange things just to see what colours and what forms look good together. Now, at the moment, when I look at these colours, I can think of the seasons going around where we can have the, the bright, vibrant colours of spring. And with Chelsea show in the autumn this year, I'm really looking forward myself to showing the subtle change of colours that come around in the season. I've been doing this for over 30 odd years and I'm still happy getting up, especially when the sun is shining, the delight of still growing flowers that people enjoy and it makes me feel happy that people enjoy seeing the flowers. Once Rob arrived at Chelsea with his dahlias and glads, Carol was keen to find out how his display had turned out. Rob, it's lovely to see you again. It is, yes. And this beautiful display. So have you won a gold? We have won another Woo! gold, yes. That's 12 consecutive gold medals in 13 shows. Not a bad average, really, is no. it? No. So with Chelsea moving to September, has that helped or hindered you? Normally we've got heating in the greenhouses, 
We've got lighting in the greenhouses to get the gladiolas in flower for May. Yeah. But this year, because a natural season, we've been able to show dahlias for the first time yeah. at Chelsea. And the quality is superb, isn't it? That's the difference with not growing under light. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. If Chelsea has given you the gardening bug and you're feeling inspired, there are endless gadgets, gizmos and accessories you could fork out for. But what does a new, keen gardener really need? Well, here's Chris Bavin to shed some light on the must-haves in your gardening toolbox. You could spend thousands of pounds a day out here at Chelsea, literally thousands, because there's so many amazing different bits of kit to help you achieve all your green-fingered goals or horticultural hopes. But if your budget is less Premier League and more Friday night five aside, you want to strip it back to the bare essentials. So what do you actually need to get the job done? One thing you will definitely need is a way to water your plants. So you can either use a hose or a watering can. This one comes with interchangeable rose heads. If you think about that like a shower head, you can either have a much finer spray or a much coarser spray, depending on how tough or how established the plants are that you are watering. You also have to think about how things work for you physically. Next on the list, secateurs. When buying secateurs, you want to look out for one that comes with a guarantee or with interchangeable parts. So if the blade or the spring go, you can replace them without having to buy a whole new set. These are brilliant. I can't wait to try them out. Best not. One thing you're definitely going to need is a spade. So I've got one here which has got a rounded point, which is fabulous. It will help you break up harder ground. This is a nice lightweight one, but you can feel that it's definitely got durability and strength. And I think it's worth investing as much as you can so you're not constantly replacing it. And it's got a lovely grip for your boots. When trying to create beautiful garden spaces with limited tools, it's really important that all the tools you do have are multifunctioning and multi-purpose, like this, the razor hoe. This little tool can do multiple jobs around the garden, from weeding around plants in a flower bed to getting into all those nooks and crannies in your paving. This might be a little tool, but it's got a big heart. And finally, we have a mini balcony gardening set. This is great for gardening on a balcony or a container or any small space for that matter. What I love about this trowel is it's got a depth gauge here so you know exactly how deep you're digging, which is really important when it comes to planting plants. And your fork, obviously, turning soil over and weeding. So I think these are an absolute must have. So there you have it. That's my top five bits of kit to get your garden. Lots of ideas there from Chris. What's your must-have tool or, oh, or gadget? Love, you know what I love? A long arm pruners. You know, like secretaires, but on I telescopic do. handles, because yeah. you can reach and you can prune and you can shape things. And I love a nice sharp pair of I, I discovered uh, a bulb planting this year, because yeah. normally I just dig it dig the hole and I bought myself a bulb planter where you literally the cone is sort of circle you shove it in the ground pull up the handle brings up the soil put the bulbs in push it back in it was so quick brilliant I did hundreds of you're getting into this <laughs> aren't you? I can tell. well with Chelsea being the most prestigious flower show in the world it's also the catwalk for new plants and varieties that the nurseries have spent years and sometimes decades breeding so, not surprisingly, the RHS Plant of the Year Award is the most coveted amongst the growers here. JJ Chalmers has been checking out this year's contenders.
You could say that the Plant of the Year Award is something that the exhibitors here in the Great Pavilion have been training for their entire lives. This is the Olympics of the horticultural world. Now, RHS Plant Committee Manager Jill Otway is here to tell us a bit more about the competition. I guess my first question is, what is this competition? What is the Plant of the Year? The Plant of the Year competition, JJ, is to celebrate the new plants that are launched by our exhibitors in, here in the Great Pavilion every year. How do you judge one plant against another? There are three main criteria. They're looking for the innovation in that plant, so advances in breeding and uh, an improvement on what has gone before. They're looking for excellence and impact in that plant, and they're looking for the likely public appeal. Will you and I want to buy it? Right, let's take a look at some of the runners and riders. 18 plants in total. Let's check out some of the favourites. This jacaranda would have been covered in beautiful blue flowers if Chelsea had gone ahead earlier in the year. But even just with these leaves, it's an absolutely stunning plant. Well, I told you earlier in the week I love a climber, but I've never seen a sweet pea like this before. In fact, it's three times as sweet as any I've seen before with these stunning lavender and burgundy petals. Even the humble kale has a shot at the crown. This, the rainbow candy crush. Not to mention, you could eat that. Sadly, these entrants fell at the final hurdle and failed to make it onto the podium. But let's take a look at the beauties that beat off tough competition and made it into the final three. So in third place, Symponium Sienna, a hardy but vibrant succulent. Insect-friendly Allium Lavender Bubbles secured second place, but there can only be one winner. Circus Eternal Flame, displaying autumnal colours throughout the year and taking the crown. Ladies and gentlemen, your plant of the year. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by John Wheatley and Peter Freeman, the men responsible for growing this absolute beauty. John, how does it feel to, to win this accolade? Oh, it's the greatest honour ever. This is the second time in two Chelsea's and to come here for an autumn Chelsea and come with such a magnificent plant is fabulous. Peter, I'd love to know what makes this a champion? What really won the competition for this plant was the foliage, which moves from bright, vivid red to orange and then through to yellow. And it's totally hardy. Well, thank you guys. And, and congratulations again on, on such an incredible achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Earlier in the week, I met first-time Chelsea visitor and host of BBC One's The Repair Shop, Jay Blades. Jay, I'm a huge fan of the show. Oh, thank you, Jay. You're right. Say. Yeah, yeah. You like it? I love it. That I means you've got it. good taste, then. Yeah. If you like the show, it's a good I, show. No, it's just I love <laughs> watching things being made, being crafted, and then being handed over. Yeah. You know, you sometimes get some tears, don't you? Just sometimes. I think the show is... It's, some people say it's like giving you a big hug because yeah. it's just a feel-good show. Yeah. So it's quite nice to be part of it as well. And the whole team are just one big happy family. Just like Chelsea here. Yeah. So have you been to Chelsea before? Never been here before and I'm quite excited to be here now because I've always wanted to come to it and I've seen you on the telly every year <laughs> and I'm like, well, I've got to get there. And now here I am. Yeah, well, uh, what's your first impression? I'll tell you what, it's busy. I never knew it was this big. And someone says to me that this is just normally quite flat before and then it's like they come in and they just build it all yeah this like, well, they, they, this whole garden's been put together in three weeks three weeks this has yeah. been yeah it looks like it's been here forever doesn't it yeah seriously it does it's amazing wow yeah but i do want to see some um i can see some stuff going on there but some upcycling and stuff like that is that, is that yeah what there's a lot of that around here yeah, yeah i mean there's a lot of recycling upcycling cool. um are you looking for anything particular in that respect every and anything taking something that is not meant to be used bringing it back into the garden or doing something completely so it's repurposing. Upcycling and sustainability, the whole shebang. So I want to see how people incorporate what I do inside the house, outside the house. Okay. So if there's sustainability and upcycling going on outside in the garden. Yeah, uh, so, do you, I mean, were you brought up with a garden? Do you, uh, do you garden yourself? No, I don't garden myself. And the council estate that I was brought up on, um, we just had like a little green in the middle and that was it. We used to play bulldog and um, um, football on it. But yeah. no, the gardens I have had have been really low maintenance. But I do like, I do like sculptures. I like things in the garden that look really cool. But do you think this might spark something off, get you gardening? That's a tall order, isn't it? Come on, why not? <laughs> it's a brilliant thing, gardening. It, it's, it's just no... an extension of what you're doing. Oh, right. If I see stuff that I'm inspired by, I more than likely will incorporate it. But 
It's going to take a lot. It has to be oh, upcycled. You're picky, I can I'm tell. Very there picky. is a lot of stuff out there. I'm <laughs> going to send you off, yeah. go and see what you find, yeah. and have fun. Thank you. This is beautiful. This is exactly what you can create from waste. Look at this. It reminds me of Piccadilly Circus. You know you've got those horses coming out of the fountain, but this one's even better because it's out of waste. Look at it. This takes a lot of time to do because you've got timber just stuck into certain areas to form this shape of a horse. One, you've got to have a good brain to realise what you're creating. And then two, you've got to have a lot of patience. I mean a lot of patience to create something like this. It's just insanely beautiful. Look at it. This is right up my street. Look at this. It's made from like fridges and freezers. And that is super cool. The craftsmanship on it is really, really good. What they've done is they've cut it and then it takes three people to do this. So they've shaped it together and then put it all back together. So you cut these strips, all the shapes that you need. Metal feathers, eh? Look at that. Who would have thought? But just using something that can just fill up a landfill site is, is perfect. And all of this is exactly the same. It's all made from stuff that would go into a landfill and it's better to look like art. Look at that. This is like, wow. I know it's a secret garden and it creates that illusion of a secret garden. As you're looking through, you want to go inside and see it. And this is an oak tree. So basically, it just fell down and cut the slivers, but I love the detail of it. That is beautiful. And also just when the rain's hitting it, you can just see the natural grain of the wood coming out. This is proper timber, doing what it's supposed to do, just looking beautiful. Like you've got the green against here, and then this garden back in here, perfect. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go back in here. You can carry on, see you later. Well, every year, Chelsea throws up some surprises and Adam Frost went round the showground to seek them out. The Chelsea Flower Show is not just about the beauty and perfection. There's plenty of things that are a little bit weird and wonderful, and I am going to find some. Wow. So what do you think of that? So, we've got a giant horse made of a hedge jumping out of a flower pot. Make of that what you will. You can't go wrong with a cousin, but how many different things can you do with one flower? Wow. Hey, so I've got the buses. I'll get you, butler. All aboard! I'm in the middle of a Chelsea show garden and I found an egg. I'll tell you what though, it does look cool. So the idea is you can raise yourself up so you're looking over that wonderful meadow. Let's see what happens. Don't stop mate, you're going down. What? <laughs> you're, going, you're going to crash into the rock, crack the egg. I thought it was easy. <laughs> but you, hey, right, this is Tom everybody, right? He designed this garden. We wanted to do something that's just a bit fun, a bit, bit, bit playful, and just do something that you have to work for your lunch. Don't you love how a Chelsea designer's mind works? So let's go. This is hard work. Look at that below there, look. You can see the stream, it is working. The stream starting to reveal itself. That view over the meadow, is superb. Come on in, you beautiful people. Come on in. What's it like to be back after having oh. the break that we've all had? It's just wonderful. Yes. Oh. But gardening saved me during the pandemic, you know. Your favourite thing you've seen so far? Uh, Salvia Amistad, I love it. You were meant to say me. <laughs> What's your favourite thing you've seen so far? I think it's definitely the balcony garden. If you could take one thing home, what would it be? 
we have, we've taken a lot of plant. We've taken loads of seeds, loads of alliums, loads of bulbs, rhizomes. We'll see if we can keep them alive. I'm really disappointed that we didn't get to talk to Monty earlier. Why would you want to talk to Monty <laughs> when you've got me? Fun and jokes aside, there are plenty of thought-provoking gardens here at the show this year, one of which is an RHS feature garden, the Garden of Hope, designed by our very own Arit Anderson. Well, it's her first ever Chelsea show garden, and I caught up with her just before the show began. Lovely to see you here again after all this time. Oh, no, I'm great to see you, I have to say, Sophie. Really great to see the team. What has it been like? This is your very first <laughs> Chelsea show garden. How's it been? It's been it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but a good one, a really good one. Um, I feel blessed that I've had an amazing team, contractors, suppliers, you know, the planting team. So I've I've been very supported. But you know, it is it's a huge amount of pressure. Um, this is um, an engagement garden, so um, as much as we don't get meddled. Every day, there's thousands of visitors going through, so the scrutiny of them is really important. And um, that's always been in my mind, and knowing that it's going on somewhere else as well. And it's amazing, the amount of time. It's, you, you had three weeks to do this, and three weeks ago, this was turf. <laughs> yeah. And now you produce this garden, which looks like it's been here forever. It must have been pretty stressful at times. I've seen you a bit <laughs> over the last few weeks. And it's not been easy, has it? No, I mean, there's, uh, it's really weird. You come and see the turf, and then you go, is my design going to fit in this? <laughs> That's weird. Um, and then in the middle, um, we were doing really well. Weather's been amazing. Um, and then we had a bit of an issue with the structures. They're really big and they were coming down in kind of big sections. And we had a, a bit of an issue with the um, transportation. So that put us back by a good half day. And of course, every minute counts. So, um, yeah. It really that, does. Yeah. How many sleepless nights have you had? Um, yeah, I was getting into a body clock of like within four hours I was awake. <gasps> Where's this? Have I done that? So. <laughs> well, look, I mean, it looks fantastic. I know people can't quite see it all right now, but it is a beautiful garden. And you are finally looking happy, relaxed, yes. smiling. It's done. It's done. It's done now. It's got to get into my frock, you know me. You do. I need, a, I need yeah. a frock. You need a frock. I can't wait to see that as well. Ari, it's so nice to see you back here oh. and to be back here again. Thank and you. good luck. Have a lovely week. Thank you, Sophie. Aritz Garden will have a permanent home at the Rosewood Mother and Baby Unit in Dartford. The centre's senior occupational therapist, Sarah Garraway, met up with Nikki Chapman on the garden. Sarah, well, welcome. This is going to be your garden shortly, isn't it? Absolutely. It looks absolutely beautiful. Stunning, I think, is the word we're yeah. after, but it has a deeper meaning as well. So, first of all, can you tell us a little bit more about your role at Rosewood? Absolutely. So, I'm the uh, Senior Occupational Therapist, so I work with mums on their recovery journey individually, um, helping them to become more independent and happy and comfortable in their role as a mum and carrying out all of their daily activities. And a big part of that is group work, so I oversee and manage manage the group timetable, run lots of the groups and I've got lots of exciting plans to run some lovely groups right here in this garden. So the mums will be here with their yeah. babies as with well? With their babies, with their babies. We do lots with mums and babies so some of the groups I run will just be for mums, things like relaxation, exercise and then others will be with the babies. Um, I run a sensory class each week, lots of bubbles and props and singing and it's really great for bonding. Um, so we've got lots of lovely ideas. The sensory garden we can bring in for the cooking groups. We're going to run barbecues out here when the weather allows. Um, some one-to-one -one sessions in a little private area that Aritz designed. So lots of ideas. You mentioned the designer Aritz. Mm. Um, I was fortunate enough while the garden was being built that she actually gave me a one-to-one -one about this garden. And Absolutely. it did move me to tears because you stand here and everyone's really, really enjoying it. But the bigger message is so important, isn't it? There's Absolutely. secluded areas, areas yeah. that people, as you say, can exercise here. That's yeah. I'm guessing really important. Really important for their recovery, just to have this lovely, beautiful therapeutic space with lots going on, lovely comfortable areas, shaded areas for the babies. Um, I think it will just promote 
a healthy recovery journey. It helps people reduce their anxiety, lift their mood. So I think it will be fantastic. And the good news is, it's not just the mums and the babies that are going to appreciate and get to use this space. Yeah. It's also your colleagues as well. Oh, we just all feel so, so lucky to have this garden come into our unit. At the minute, we've got a lovely garden. It's a big space, but it's, it's nothing like this. It's going to completely transform it, I think, Nikki. Yeah. yeah. I love the different areas yeah. and also how people can enjoy this space. Oh, they absolutely will. Even just us sitting here. So I can imagine sitting here with a couple of mums, the babies being down here, um, doing a few little singing in groups even, just having a chat. I think it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. We know how much, like looking at the wildlife and appreciating our green yeah. spaces has helped us all, especially if we're going through mental difficulties. Yeah. And I'm sure the mums, the babies and all your lovely colleagues are going to appreciate it too. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you too. Thanks for having me. Well, it is really wonderful to know that Aritz Garden is going some way to helping new mothers at a time when they need it most. And in fact, a lot of these gardens will go on. They will live on after Chelsea. There's the Florence Nightingale Garden, which you'll be able to see at St Thomas's Hospital in London, just above that yeah. wall of hearts that sprung up along the River Thames. Yeah, it's a lovely thing. M&G as well is going to a pocket park in South London. So, you know, people can walk through it and experience it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to transform a disused piece of land, isn't it? And Sarah Eberly's garden, the slice of Dartmoor, that's going to Winchester Hospice, so people will be able to see that there yeah. as well. It's I think great. it's really important and, and many more people can engage with the show and yeah, it's just wonderful and it's good to know some of this Chelsea magic lives on after the show and there's a legacy for communities that will really benefit from the extraordinary gardens here. Well, that is it from us. It has been a unique week. The first ever in September. Who knows, maybe the last ever Chelsea at this time of year. And we do hope you have enjoyed everything that it's had to offer. So it's goodbye from the RHS Chelsea Flower Show 2021, an event supported by M&G. We look forward to seeing you back here in May 2022. Until then, take care and do keep gardening. Bye-bye. Yeah.